Firefly Blue Ghost, separation confirmed. This is CBS AOS, stand by. We have acquisition of signal with a Blue Ghost landing. Tell me what just happened in there. I don't know, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> Uh, we just landed on the moon. <laughs> we just landed on the moon! <laughs> we did it! All the years, we're here. We landed on the moon. Uh, it's pretty surreal. You know, it looked a lot like all the simulations we did leading up to it, and it's a little hard to believe that it's real, but uh, I can confirm it is, in fact, real. <laughs> Alcon, chief engineer on ops. Y'all select the landing. We're on the moon. <laughs> For me, tonight in the FD position was a roller coaster of excitement. It was uh, making sure that everything in the procedure was proceeding nominal, while at the same time being ready for any anomalies, making sure that whatever presented itself any issues, that we would be able to solve them in the correct timing needed and keep the descent sequence going. Uh, there were not a lot of surprises. Uh, we followed pretty close to the middle of, of the Monte Carlos for our, our trajectory, so that was, that was really spot on. We we're able to land with, with those being pretty far off, but we followed right, right down the, the, the middle of the line there. I, I guess I was surprised that nothing went terribly wrong. <laughs> I mean, we performed two hazard avoidance maneuvers, just like we expected to. We landed at our targeted landing site, just like we expected it to. Uh, we had, before the mission, charted sort of like a descent path. And it was amazing to just watch us stick with it. Sometimes we'd go a little above it, a little below it, but we just followed all the way down to the ground. It was picture perfect. It really was. You know, we started the power descent initiation and the room was silent for like 12, 13 full minutes. And then all of a sudden we'd landed and it was smoother than any sim we've ever done, um, which is just absolutely phenomenal. The, the room was ecstatic. We got the first couple photos down uh, and I think the vibes have been really good since. Oh my God, it felt so weird at first. I didn't know how to feel at first. And then like the emotions came in, like seeing the data come in that we landed that we saw the moon gravity and the landing leg contact sensors, we, that clicked it for me as well, and we made it. <laughs> Tonight, uh, it was really exciting getting to the surface. We all cheer, we all hug each other, celebrate it, but uh, the mission is just starting. Basically, we just completed a very important milestone but our mission on the surface is gonna continue for the next 14 days. So as soon as we landed on the moon, we had a little bit of a chance to celebrate. We needed to dive in into surface operations. These first couple of days are gonna be really busy because we need to get all the payloads uh, turned on and then make sure that they're getting the data and the, collecting the science that they need. We're starting to get into operations here shortly. I think we're an hour and a half after touchdown at the two hour mark we are going to deploy the surface access arm. We are going to deploy the EDS payload. EDS science operations are going to begin. They're going to demonstrate their dust mitigation technology. And then we're going to do LPV sampling ops. It's start, going to start collecting regolith and sorting it in their sample sorter. And from that, you know, we just go one after the other. We have a lot of payload operations in this first day. So it's, it's gonna be a busy couple of weeks. There is about two more weeks of surface op that we need to do before the mission is over, but for the fluids team and for the propulsion team, for the most part, the job is done. We need to keep an eye on health. We need to keep an eye on uh, you know, making sure that nothing is trending in a way that's dangerous for other systems, but we're not firing the engines again. We're not repointing the spacecraft. I recognize the incredible sacrifice that everyone in this room has made, but I also wanted to go ahead and shout out the incredible sacrifice that all the families of everyone in this room made. You know, when we listened to, um, one of the Apollo flight directors came and talked to us, and, and he kind of said that while they were working on Apollo, 
Their spouses kept America moving and kept their families together. And, and that has not been easy. Uh, that, that was the case for this mission as well. And I am certain that every single significant other of the people in this room have stood up and have rose to the occasion just like everyone in that room has. Uh, but they're the unsung heroes who, uh, you know, we, we wouldn't be here, so. Bear turned around and she grabbed me and that was the one that I completely broke. Um, she whispered in my ear, like all the late nights, being away from the babies really made it really worthwhile. And it's so true because it was so hard. Like we as moms and parents have to make the choices of like being home with our families or coming to work. And it's like our supportive families let us make the, the dream possible. And it's like, we all do it for them, like for, the, for our families and for our babies. It's like, to give the world, put the world in a better place for them. And so like, I, my hopes and dreams for my daughter is that like, we make the world better for them, that if they choose to go into industry, like we just keep raising the glass ceiling for them and someone's gonna break it and I hope it's them. So hearing that from Farrah really took me down because took me down in a great way because like she also has a daughter, like she's doing this and like having <laughs> oh, have fun. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well, there we go. <laughs> um, I don't know what I was talking about. Every lesson that we've learned in the last three years uh, through, through building and testing and building and testing has, has been incredibly hard won um, through the, the hard work of a lot of people that are on the team, a lot of people that have been on the team over the last few years, and uh, a, a lot of help from everybody um, on the Blue Ghost team and on the Propulsion team and, and at Firefly as a whole. And it's, uh, it, it's amazing what we've been able to do. Successfully landing makes me definitely more excited about the next couple missions because we're going to try and add to that, right? Challenge ourselves even more. But this is just the start of this mission, really, because we did all this for our customers, for all our payloads on board. And now it's up to us to make sure that they can execute as much as possible and that NASA and uh, companies can get as much data as they need about, you know, what they're trying to figure out on the moon. Uh, and that can carry towards either our next couple missions or how NASA, you know, progresses through the Artemis program. We've, we've all been working on this a lot of nights and weekends for, for four years now to get here. Uh, it's an incredibly short period of time, um, but we put in some incredibly long days to, to make this happen. Uh, you know, some of these people started as, as pretty junior engineers, me myself included, at least in the aerospace side of things. Uh, for many of the people in that room, this was their first spacecraft mission. Uh, let alone first lunar lander. Uh, so to have it have it be this successful, uh, I think it's just a testament to the you know the the amount that teamwork has to to play into it. We're all here to support one another. We've all got each other's backs, uh, and then we all did this together.